All right, we're back uh, with uh, setting up and configuring the unified infrastructure. So we've now covered the lot of all of the cloud-only infrastructure, and we are now shifting over to Unified for the rest of the day with a module at the very end um, that relates to the client side, right? Kind of ending on the client side, which is a which is a shared experience for the most part um, between the two platforms as it relates to mobile devices, anyway. So with that, uh, let's let's go to the slides. Okay, um, first off, we're gonna cover a little bit, a couple slides on System Center Configuration Manager 2012 SP1 and some new features there that relate uh, to this overall storyline of consumerization of IT or people-centric IT as we like to call it. Uh, then we're gonna talk about how, what are the processes to configure the Windows Intune connector. And then finally, what does the mobile device management setup look like inside of the unified console? For the unified capabilities, I think it is really relevant to bring out some of the SP1 improvements. Uh, number one is the fact that we do have unified now. <laughs> so you can connect the two together. You need SP1 for that. Uh, but on, on top of that, you know, there's a lot broader support for operating systems. As you know, System Center Configuration Manager has been out for, oh man, what is it, 20, 30 years? I don't know, what, it's been out for a long time, right? Um, but we, we have support for Mac OS clients. That's one of the big differentiators, uh, as well as Linux and Unix servers, as well as servers, right? Um, SCCM will support servers, whereas Intune does not still. Uh, the other thing that's there, right, is Windows to go. So there's a number of things around Windows to go that, that are supported. And then, uh, you know, of course, you've got a lot more control capabilities for those of you who like to automate script, do all those kinds of things. For those of you who know System Center Configuration Manager, you're used to those things. Um, obviously, that's, there's a lot more power in that uh, than, than currently you have today in Configuration Manager. So to kind of break this down a little further, uh, again, the Windows Embedded, Windows To Go, Mac OS support, those are some, some uh, big platforms that SCCM 2012 SP1 supports that you're not gonna get on Intune. Uh, furthermore, what you have is uh, things like OS deployment. Right, if we were to try and deploy operating systems over the internet, there's a lot involved there, <laughs> right? And, and I would say, generally speaking, you're probably, if you're gonna deploy a full image or a full operating system to a machine, you're, you're more than likely gonna be doing that on-premise or on a LAN, which is where System Center Configuration Manager really hits home where you can you know, push out images to hundreds of machines if you so desire uh, on, your, on your local network. Software medium, metering is, is another big one that I get, I get requested for for a lot of different customers, uh, is that, hey, you wanna monitor the usage of, of the software in your environment. You wanna enforce that, you know, the licenses and, and have uh, those additional capabilities there. There's, there's some reporting and things you can do in Windows Intune, but you've got a lot deeper and richer capabilities in SCCM 2012. Um, of course, this is not, this list is not a comprehensive list, but hopefully this will help you, again, try and make a decision on uh, what you wanna go with, whether unified or, or cloud-only configuration uh, in your environment. Okay, let's move forward now to configuring the Windows Intune connector and what are all the steps involved here. More specifically, uh, this, this blinking, flashing yellow connector <laughs> is, is what we're, we're really talking about here, right? It's how does the configuration manager connect up to the Windows Intune cloud service that then enables um, all of the mobile device management um, inside of your organization. So, the, the PC management side of things would still be managed through your configuration manager console. So if you have you know, the, your configuration manager uh, agents or your SCCM agents on your devices, whether they're on the internet or wherever else, that would still all be under the hood of ConfigMan. But the main purpose um, that we use this connector for is that direct mobile device management. Without that connector, you, you do not have direct mobile device management inside of your environment. What, is the, what are the steps that you need to do to, to overall configure the unified environment? Well, first up, of course, you're gonna to need to sign up for a Windows Intune account. Uh, we've covered that in great detail, and that's the same whether you're on the cloud only or whether you're gonna go unified. Sign up for a trial account um, or go through your volume license account to, to sign in to, to Intune. And then after that, um, although it's not a, 
there's no technical limitation why you need to do the second step of synchronizing your AD. It is a recommended and a suggested step because if you don't do that second step next, then you're going to have no identities, no groups, no users inside of um, uh, you know Windows Intune uh, for for management. Uh, and it's just a good general practice to get your, your directory and your identities synchronized between Intune and Configuration Manager first. Of course, we've covered that in uh, the earlier Module 3 in depth. Then we come to the next three sections that are there. So we have the Place the Windows Intune Connector Site System role. I'm going to show you that. Configure the Windows Intune Connector. I'm going to also show you that. And then finally, setting up the MDM properties. And instead of talk to that, instead of talk to a bunch of slides, we're going to show you that now in a demo. Uh, let me switch to that right now. Okay, just a slight delay in the switch here. Okay, here we are on the Configuration Manager 2012 SP1 console, and the first thing we want to showcase is the, the site and server and system role. So if we go here, over to, hold on a minute. Let's see if I got my, oh. Uh, if we go over here to um, the, the site system and system roles, we will want to add a site system role for Windows Intune Connector. Um, with this, you just would click through um, the wizards. And in this case, I've already added the Windows Intune agent. But this is where you would go to add the Windows Intune agent to the site system role. And you need one of those site system roles inside of your organization uh, or your structure right, to connect to Windows Intune. And it would be one only, uh, one connection point for the two. And as you notice here, down below, I've got this, this one site that I have does have that Windows Intune site uh, connector installed already. When we now move to the next step, so that's kind of the first step, install the site system role, then we're going to go to configuring the connector. Um, the connector or the Intune subscription is here, and when you first sign up uh, for this, this service, it's going to be not configured, and you'd go in to configure the wizard. Now, since I've already done that in my demo environment, I'm going to switch over to a video of this. Uh, just so you can see kind of what the wizard looks like and what does it do uh, to get initially configured. Give me one second here. Okay. Um, actually, right here. Okay. So here we are going to go to uh, Configuration Manager console. Back again to where I just was, and this is the same machine that I configured earlier. And under the Windows Intune subscription, subscriptions, you'll notice uh, that we right-click, and now it says Create a Windows Intune subscription. Uh, it has a link to the account portal in case you haven't already created an account. And then you need to sign in. It pulls up a web page. You sign on with your global administrator ID uh, that you did when you first created your account. Once you sign in, there's a slight delay. And um, then it goes back to the console. And you cannot move forward until you say, Allow Configuration Manager to manage the subscription. Now, what this is doing is it's setting the authority inside of Intune to have Configuration Manager be the, the, the point of management. Next up, you need to say, hey, what, what users are you going to allow to be managed and, and synchronized inside of Windows Intune? And, and in this case, I have no, at that time, I had no users joined into my account. Uh, by then, you probably would have some. Uh, but you know, this is configuring the Windows Intune portal via the console there. Now, one of the things you'll just notice that is that through that wizard, when I went back here, the, uh, we had the option here to configure mobile device, uh, different mobile device platforms. Technically speaking, you do not have to, um, you do not have to configure those at the initial start. Um, and we're, you're going to see here in a minute, I'm going to walk through what that looks like um, in, the, in, the, in the console. Um, when you finish, we click close, and so that's kind of that's the wizard, right? That that does the initial synchronization of the account. After you have that done, then we would go in to configure our mobile device management properties. If we right click, and this is my live demo account, the one I configured from that video earlier. If we go into properties here, there's a number of different tabs. First off, you'll see the one that I configured using the wizard. Right here, you can see that um, we have 
uh, all of the users, the, the user collection. At this time, I have more users in, in, in the list. Uh, and the company name, which is the, the names displayed on the company portal. A URL, you can configure the colors, if you want, of the portal. And then this is the site that uh, devices are going to get pulled into that are, that are found from Windows Intune. You also have this check service status. And there, you know, in case the service is down or something's off, um, it's an easy click to see, you know, what's going on with, with the service. I'm gonna, I'm, and now I'm just going to walk through the, the various mobile device platforms. And so you can see all the kind of steps that are, that are in place for the, the mobile device management. Uh, the first one I'll start from right to left is Windows Phone. So here, what you can see is we, we need two pieces of information. One is the code signing certificate. And this is going to be the one that you get from usually your developers, right? Your developers are folks that are doing mobile device management with Windows Intune. Uh, and part of this enrollment process for a Windows Phone is also to have the, the company portal application. So as a prerequisite step, you need to go in and deploy that company portal application um, before you even get to this configuration itself. So what I'll do here is I'll, I'll snap back out of this and just show you real quickly. And, I'm, and we're going to do a deployment uh, later of, of, a, of an application. But uh, what you would do is download this zap file from online. Okay, and here you can see this is the public download for the company portal app, and you'll notice this MSI. All it does is 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 outputs a, a, a ssp.zap file, which is this guy here. What you'd then need to do with that SSP or self-service portal zap file for Phone8 is have your developer um, have sign that app with uh, the the enterprise certificate that 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 your company uses. Once that's done, they'll, your developer will hand you back that zap file. And at that point, you can then go into the, the configuration portal here and go through the wizard, just like you would with any other wizard, and say, deploy the Windows Phone app package. And in this case, you know, we'd specify the SSP zap. We already have this. We already have this application in there, so I'm not going to continue to go through the wizard. We're going to go through a complete wizard in a little bit. But that's all you'd need to do first. So when you come back to when you come back to the Windows Intune subscription and click on the Company Portal app, you would notice that that app is there. And that would be the app that uh, would automatically be pushed out to your, your Windows Phone device as soon as you enroll it. Okay, that's, that's Windows Phone 8, essentially, uh, and the setup that you need to do there. We'll skip and move to Windows RT. Now, the, there's kind of two places where you're going to see uh, uh, certificates for, for Windows RT. Uh, the, first, uh, the, the first one here is, is in this section, and this would be the code signing certificate um, or the, the cert file that enables you to, uh, to do side loading of applications. Right. Um, so whatever whatever applications that you want to push out, um, you need to be able to trust the certificate to to sideload and, and deploy those to particular applications. This is more of a, a technical and a trust type of issue. The other place where you'll see certificates lit up, um, where you get into more of the licensing side of things, is is in this side of the console. So let's go over to software library, and then. Windows RT sideloading keys. There, you will also need sideloading keys um, unless, well, yeah, for RT devices, you will need sideloading keys um, installed. And you can see here, I've, I, you have one, I have one activation used um, for the keys that I have. Uh, and um, really there, you just put the key in, and, and that's it. There's kind of two, two certifications or two key elements to, to Windows RT and sideloading side loading there. Okay, let's go back again to the Windows Intune subscription. We've covered so far uh, Windows Phone 8, Windows RT, and now let's go to the iOS platform. With iOS, uh, you're going to need to follow these steps that you have in this list. Um, once you uh, enable this, you're going to need to go through the three-step process that's here. Now, at, uh, at first, you see the step one is the request APN service in the config man console. Well, uh, 
it may not be immediately obvious, but it is right up here. <laughs> so when you look up here, you can see create APN uh, certificate request, right? And um, there is where you'll click on this link and you just specify whatever file name you want, whatever CSR you want. It doesn't really matter um, because what you're gonna do is then submit, go to the app, Apple Push certification portal, sign in with your Apple ID uh, and then submit this file that's there. They're gonna then give you back a certificate that you will then put into this, this section here, APN certificate. And this is a free thing from Apple. Um, you know, you do need an Apple ID, but it's not gonna charge you anything for that. Um, and once you enable that certificate, it's good for a year by default, and you can, you can renew on their site. Um, then now, after this, and you, you enable that, now Configuration Manager can can manage uh, the iOS type devices. And last, we have Android, right? And Android is a, is a pretty simple one because the only thing that you need to do here is just say, click to enable Android platform. <laughs> it's not, not really anything else here because the, the, the reason being, again, Android, um, as, as Richard mentioned earlier, um, there's not really a, a defined direct management standard for Android and there's a large variety of devices in the environment. So for now, we are just sticking with Exchange Active Sync as the mechanism to, to manage and, and control those particular devices. Okay, well, um, kind of giving you a, a, quick, a quick run through of all of the MDM setups uh, and the configuration options there. And I think that's, that's about all I have for this module. Was there other questions that folks had online? I'm um, just looking through the list here, and um, pretty much it looks like our, our guys, uh, Paul, Nathan, and, uh, and Andrew, have been uh, helping out quite a lot and got a fair amount answered. Um, as we go back up the thread, there's some other ones that relate to maybe some of the earlier questions and earlier modules. Um, just trying to see if there's any that are particularly relevant here. Um, could you install the Windows Intune client via a CCM task sequence uh, during the capture stage? Thanks for answer. Um, so that alludes to the fact that um, uh, yes, it is possible to do that as long as the device is not managed by SCCM at that point. So Config Manager um, uh, can go through a task sequence for an unmanaged client to kick off a software install. So if you kick off the Windows Intune software installation at that point, um, you're on-prem, it can uh, install our, our agents, and then you'll manage it through Windows Intune cloud-only config. Um, so there's okay. that one. Um, but no, I think we've got some others that we can be working on during the break. But let's, uh, let's take a few minutes here, yeah, get our take, breath back. and Take then... a short break, and then we'll be back uh, giving you more information on the unified configuration. Stay tuned.